I'm going to paint the Zangor, and Zangors aren't exactly demons, they are mutants. There's still some humanity in there. They're not denizens in the warp, they are living, breathing things. And so I want to keep something like a skin in there, a skin color, but still get that blue hue going that should go with all demons of Zinj. So first off, I'm going to start with a layer of gray sear. And this is a very light gray. Uh, this will be great to wash later on with some Draconov Nightshade, really dark blue shade, to get some blue in the recesses. And then after that, we're gonna highlight this with some blue as well. But for now, I'm gonna put this layer all over the skin, the hair, the legs, all of it, just not the armor and the weapons. All right, there's the base layer of grace here. And now I'm going to wash the whole model with Draconov Nightshade, but I've thinned it down quite a bit. It's about one part Draconov Nightshade to four parts of water. Uh, this way it gets just that little bit of a blue tint, the whole model, and you get a bit more blue in the recesses and a bit less blue on the upper parts that are sticking out. And this is just to get that blue hue. All right, so that first layer of wash is done and looking at it now, it's just not blue enough. So I'm going with some pure Draconov Nightshade all over the model. And yeah, that turns it a lot more blue. And so now we've got a grayish blue Zangor and that's the base layer that I want. I'll leave this to dry and then can start highlighting. I mean, sometimes you paint and things don't turn out exactly as you want, but that's the great thing with miniature painting. You can almost always just go back and fix it later. With the wash dry, it's time for a highlight. I'm going to start with the legs and I'm going to give this a light dry brush of Thunderhawk Blue. And I really only want to hit the edges, the ridges, the stuff that's sticking out. So I'm using these STC dry brushes here because that way you can get a much lighter dry brush than with the old ones. And then up here on the torso, the less mutated part, I'm dry brushing with gray sear, uh, the same color as I used for the base coat. And this way you really get a difference between the legs, which are more blue and which are much more heavily mutated and the upper body, which still resembles a bit of a human shape and human muscles, etc. And that way you can differentiate, you can show the progression of the mutation on this model. Now you can see that the legs are a darker shade of blue than the torso. And that way you start to tell a little bit of a story with your mini. You know, the mutation progresses, the legs are pretty much chicken legs with hooves. Uh, but up top, uh, the body at least is a bit more humanoid and then the face is more avian again and we're going to add some more color to the face later but for now i'm going to work on the armor i'm going to start with night lord's blue for all of the armor plating and this is a very dark blue a slightly purplish hue and i'm going very dark because of this piece of artwork in the old thousand suns codex it might be in the new one too i haven't seen the new one yet but I really like it. And the blue on the armor is much, much darker than the bright blue that you normally see. And so that's what I'm going to try and get close to. And also this dark armor will be a great contrast with the lighter skin of the Zangors and the cloth and trim when I paint my Thousand Suns Rubric Marine. And then I'm doing the trim of the armor with Ushapti bone. And I'm also going to pick out some of the details on the weapons. I did some parts with Night Lord's Blue and again, some of the trim will be with Ushapti bone. All right, bone trim is done. And now before shading and highlighting, uh, I'm going to block in some other colors. So I'm going to start with some lead belcher on the weapons and other metallic parts. Then the cloth between his legs and the handles of his weapons get a layer of white scar. And then a layer of Mechanicus standard gray over the hair that's on his back, the horns and his beak. Oh, and the hooves. And so with all the colors blocked in, it's time for some washing. And I'm going to start with non-oil. I'm going to apply this on all parts of the model except for the skin. Uh, so the armor, the trim, 
the weapons, the metals, all of it gets a light wash of non-oil. Okay, the wash is dry and it's time to highlight a bit. And I'm going to start with Stormhost Silver on the weapons and the other metals. And I really want to do this quite heavily because I want the weapons to stand out. And right now with the lead belcher, it's a little bit too gray and it kind of disappears against the model. And the Stormhost Silver will make it look silvery and that will make it pop a bit more and it's a good idea to do this with your weapons because you want them to get a bit of the attention of the viewer. Next up is a bit of gold on the armor trim and I'm using Auric Armor Gold and that's a horrible horrible paint. I would never recommend using it because it just doesn't cover. You have to put layer after layer after layer on it. But I'm using it because I don't want it to cover. I just want a little bit of a gold shine on some parts of the bony trim. So for example here on the horns, just a little bit will give it a bit of a gold shine and you get this weird bony trim with a shiny edge. And I think it looks cool, I think it looks kind of magical and yeah, it gets this weird effect where you get metallics in organics and yeah, really something that I can see happen with change. Okay, that turned out much better than I expected. Now you've got this little old gold color and I even hit some of the blue parts of the armor so you get a little bit of that color shift idea here on the weapon for example and there on the bracer and when you turn around you suddenly catch a glimpse of the gold uh, it's a really cool effect. I'm definitely going to use this a bit more here and there. But now let's finish this model up. So I'm going to hit the eyes very lightly with some white scar because I want to make them glow later on. And I've already done this with the eye that's on his armor down at his crotch over there because I want to have these eyes throughout the model but also other Thousand Suns models all pretty much the same. So you have this nice recognizable little detail on all of your models. Now I'm just going to paint the eyes with ethermatic blue. And this contrast paint is great if you want something to have a kind of glowy or glassy look. Uh, if you use enough of it, it becomes kind of greenish and that's what I want because that offsets against the dark blue armor. Especially when you're painting Thousand Suns, your Rubric Marines, your Occult Terminators, all of those. And you paint them in dark blue armor, you want something brighter to stand out. Now before basing, I like to touch up the base just a little with some abandoned black. This way you don't have, for example here, this white blotch sticking out. It might be visible through your basing material if you don't cover it properly and that would be a real shame because you can't really fix that once the basing material is on the base. So just give it all a thin layer of a bad and black. Now for the basing material I'm using Astro Grand Debris. Uh, that's the grey texture paste from Games Workshop and I'm using grey because a lot of the model has already these grayish blue tones and if you use a bright color for the base while your model has such muted colors the model is going to disappear. So you can't really use Martian soil, you can't use any yellowish sand because that would just draw the attention away. Instead I'm going with this one, it's gray. I'm gonna wash it afterwards with non-oil to make it even darker, almost black and then the model still stands out, even though the model doesn't have any really bright colors in them. And so now that the base is dry, I'm washing it with non-oil. And this is a good way to give the base a bit more shade and also to just blacken it a bit, because like I said, I wanted to have this dark, uh, pretty much invisible base so that the mini stands out a bit more. Now he's almost done, but he needs a bit of blood effects. And whenever you paint blood effects, it's a good idea to tell a little story. So that makes more sense where the blood ends up and how it looks. So for example, here on the blade, of course, he's chopping with this side. So I'm taking some blood for the blood god and I put a big dollop on there. Now I want to spread it out a bit. Also on the other side, there we go. And just streak down the blood so it gets these effect as if he's been really swinging that blade super fast. Now the other blade of course he strikes with those spikes so some over here and then I want to get some onto the model as well because if he's swinging those blades then of course he gets covered in a bit of blood as well. 
Now here, his beak that's sticking out. Uh, why not some in his mouth? Maybe he bit somebody. Looks good. Then try to show that some of the blood has been dropping off onto the base as well. I'm taking some of the blood from here because I think it's a bit too much and dab some here on the ground. That way you get the impression that the blood has been dripping off this weapon. Uh, somewhere over here. Let's get some on his hands. Maybe he's punched somebody. And let's get some more on his clothes here and there. Just little blood spots from sprays that may have gone all over him. Here, maybe he used the back of his blade over there and got some blood on there as well. And like that, just go around the model and don't overdo it because you can't really fix it because after this, the model's pretty much done and too much blood is just gonna screw it up. So do slowly. I'm using a little dry brush that I cut to size so that I have more control. I highly recommend taking an old dry brush and doing something like this because it's just much easier to get into the nooks and crannies of your model. I don't have my turntable with me. In case you didn't know, I just moved countries and I had to make some choices about what I'm taking with me and what has to come later with the movers. So instead, here are some pictures of this Zangor finished. I think it looks good. I think it's pretty easy to paint. Just a handful of paint, some dry brushing, washing and detailing as is my usual style when I want something simple and grim dark. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first one in my new painting spot. I now have two cameras that can shift in and out of focus all the time. Fantastic. And I'm going to practice a bit more with that. So hopefully next video is going to be a bit better. As always, I want to thank my patrons from the bottom of my heart for all their fantastic support. And if you want to support me and you don't want to do so financially, just hit the like button, subscribe, share this video with your mates and check out Instagram and Facebook for more pics of my minis. Thanks for watching. See you next time.